Hello and welcome back to Seattle Down Customs. On the workbench today is actually a commission build and it's going to be the 1963, the Mustang II, the original concept car. So this is a project that the, the client's gonna be releasing later on. There are some kind of pretty specific instructions with this kit to kind of make it look as real as possible. And this is gonna be a curbside, so it doesn't require an engine. Anyway, but there are a few things that um, he asked that I do on this kit. So let's uh, open her up and see what we've got. Those decals are pretty yellowed, so I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that. I might just try to mask and paint in the stripes for that. Looks like it has a removable hard top. All right, everything looks to be in pretty good shape. So first things first, we're gonna get this uh, some of these parts removed from the sprues and um, sprue points cleaned up, sanded down, and then we're gonna sand down the whole body and uh, get things kind of prepared for, for paint. Uh, one of the things specifically that was mentioned is in the original car, the hood actually is curved right around these edges. So I'll have to figure out how I'm going to do that. Um, it's going to be easy enough to just kind of sand the edges around the hood itself, but then to try to add the curve into the body panel might be a little challenging. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet, but... Um, We'll figure something out. So let's move ahead with uh, sprue removal and body cleanup. So for sprue removal, I'm just gonna be using my Tamiya side cutters, my flush cutters. And one of the things you have to be careful of is because the inside is slanted, you don't wanna cut straight away because sometimes if they're attached to the sprue, you can see that the inside cut will actually force the pliers uh, into the body a little bit and you'll get a little bit of a gouge in there So a lot of times if I want if I have to be really precise Sometimes I'll just cut and release a little bit of pressure and then I can go ahead and smooth flush cut some of those uh, important areas All right, so to remove some of these ejection pin marks, I'm first just gonna mark them up a little bit. Hit them with some sandpaper, and that'll kind of give me an indication if they're raised or sunk in, if I need to fill them or cut them out. All right, looks like most of them are raised up. I was gonna try to use my Tamiya engraving blade, and I have a chisel on here specifically for removing ejection pin marks, but um, it looks like I might not need this, as almost all these uh, looks like they're gonna be pretty easily removed with just a little bit of sanding. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna wet sand that because a lot of times these things will fill up with plastic and, and stuff a little bit more quickly. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of water just to kind of ease that sanding process a little bit for me. And then when all my marker is gone, then uh, I know to kind of check that and see if I've got everything removed and if it's nice and flat. That one looks pretty good. So we'll keep, uh, keep going with the rest of these. All right, so while I'm doing this, uh, this is just an emery board, and I, I don't know what grit this is, but it's just for fingernails, um, which is kind of a reason why it fills up with polystyrene when I'm sanding, because it's not really for plastic, but um, or it works pretty good for me, so I don't know what these grits are, but one side is uh, stronger than the other one, and I'll use the more abrasive side to kind of really cut down a little bit quicker on my sanding, and then when I feel like I'm getting closer to having the sanding point be smooth, then I'll switch over to the smooth side and finish it off, so that way I'm not left with uh, real deep scratches or grooves that I have to continue to sand down to get those out once I have removed uh, the imperfection that I'm trying to remove. And I also like using this because it gives me a nice flat even sand on a flat surface. Um, if I were to try to use some of these sanding sponges and stuff they kind of curve and flex and they kind of sand around. Don't really give me as flat of a sand as I want so I like to use something flat. Uh, these sanding sticks are also really good for that and these are hobby grade sanding sticks. But since I've got a lot of sanding um, I just like to use the, the emery boards gives me a little bit broader surface to work with. 
because the hood and the trunk and the doors and everything is going to be closed. Like I said, this is going to be a curbside kit basically with the exception of having a detailed interior. Um, it's not going to be something that's going to be picked up and you know the hood's going to be open to see if there's an engine. It's just going to be a display only. So that's kind of what we're the direction we're going with this one. All right, as you can see, I cut the hood hinges off. I'll be cutting the door hinges off and also the trunk hinges off. Again, because these are these are going to be static, um, glued into position, and so that I can get everything to fit nice and smooth and flush. So, because I have those rear hinges off, and there's already a couple little hood stops on the front there, uh, I'm going to add a couple on the back, and I'm just going to be gluing in a little bit of styrene sheet. I'll just cut some strips, glue some styrene sheet on the underside, um, just to use as a, a stop point for the hood, and then. Um, once I get everything aligned and the front curves rounded off, however I'm going to do that, then I'll, uh, I'll glue it in and make it permanent. And for that, I'm just going to be using some uh, polystyrene from Evergreen Scale Models. And I just have a bunch of, I have a couple different uh, things. So I'll probably just use some of this. Again, this is just, just to kind of stop it, to keep it from falling through so that I can get everything measured up and where I need it to be for installation. And for my cement, since I'm going styrene to styrene, I'm going to be using the Tamiya Extra Thin Cement just to give it a really good bond. And then for my mold lines, I'm again, I'm just going to be using my magic marker just as a guide coat. So when I'm sanding down, it'll give me a visual indicator on uh, how far I'm sanding. And of course, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can, of course, use your sanding sticks um, or you can use your sanding sponges, whatever you prefer, because you are sanding on a curve. So you do kind of want it to conform a little bit and give you a nice soft curve. So I like the sanding sponges for that as well. Another thing that the client asked was that I remove the windshield wipers. I guess he had some other ones that he wanted to add. So we're just gonna cut those off and smooth them down. And then uh, we can add the ones that he wants to add on later. So for the rest of these points, I am going to use my Tamiya scribing tool with my flat chisel blade on the end. Now you do have to be careful with this because this is quite sharp on the sides and it will scratch or gouge into your body. So generally I have some cleanup that I have to fill uh, when I use this, but it is really effective at taking away larger amounts of plastic. those windshield wipers removed and smoothed off. I've got a little scratch I need to take care of there for my scribing tool. I'll just fill that in with some Mr. Surface 500 or something. But uh, we're going to keep moving ahead with uh, body cleanup and um, get this thing ready for some primer. All right, so these gaps in the door panel are for the hinges. So basically it's gonna leave room for that door hinge to fit in there. But since I'm cutting that off, I don't want that to be visible. So I'm gonna cut these hinges off of this door and then glue them into here like this so that uh, they'll fill these gaps in the door so that you won't see them when you're looking into the interior of the vehicle. Now, as I'm doing this build, I am gonna jump around quite a bit because I have to kind of get this thing assembled and uh, painted, but I need the body to be as straight as possible. So I'm gonna kind of have to do this so that I can get this thing looking the best that it can be and as straight as possible. 
So yeah, I'm gonna be jumping around quite a bit on some of this stuff. All right, as you can see, we've got a pretty significant gap between the front and the back of the hood. I think that gap is a little bit too big. I don't, I don't like it. So what I'm gonna do, I was just checking to see if this would be wide enough. So I'm gonna glue some of this uh, strip styrene onto the face of this hood, or I guess the back of it. Just glue some on like that, glue a strip on, and then shape it to the rest of the hood so it'll blend in but that way it'll give me a little it'll fill in that gap a little bit more and this is just some strip styrene from evergreen scale models so again i'm going to use some tamiya extra thin cement on that just so it'll bind to that polystyrene really well All right, we're going to set that aside and let that dry up for a little while. I'm going to open up these uh, exhaust ports on this rear fender. So first I'm just going to drill out a couple holes and then we'll just start kind of scribing that out. All right, so what I'm using is just a set of jeweler's files, um, just all different various sizes and shapes, just a set of 10. So I use these a lot for when I'm shaping a lot of stuff. All right, so that looks pretty good. So let's get this, uh, let's get this attached on the back end. All right, that's not quite aligned up yet, but I'm gonna let the rest of this dry up so it's nice and set. And then we'll start working on getting that to fit a little bit better. All right, I'm liking that gap on the uh, hood a lot more. All right, now we just need to round off the corners and match them up on the front end, and uh, we should be ready to install the hood. All right, I think for my gap filling, or for creating the curve on these edges to match the hood, I think I'm just gonna use some super glue. So we'll just try this and see how it goes. Cause then I can just kind of drop this in and form this corner, form this curve a little bit. And then we'll just build this up little by little. Let's try some extra thick super glue, see if that works a little better. Oh, that actually worked really well. All right, so just need to shape that just a little bit and then of course smooth it off. But um, that actually worked pretty well.
I'm going to be using one of my round rat tail jewelers files to kind of give that a nice curve. All right, once we get that into primer, I think that'll really give us an indicator of where we're at on that, but uh, it looks pretty good. So we'll go with that. All right, now we're going to go around and start getting some of the rest of these body panels smoothed off and blended in. And then we'll be ready to install some of these other panels. All right, and then for those gaps, I'm just going to fill them in a little bit with some Mr. Primer 500. All right, got all the panels smoothed off. Looking good, nice and blended in. So I think we're ready to set the hood. And I know I had those little stops up here, but um, it was where I cut the hinges off. And so the hood's a little bit thicker right there. So it was kind of holding up a little bit. So I'm gonna redo those, but I'm gonna put them down a little bit farther down on the sides and then maybe one on the, on the top there. So let's do that. I'm just going to let those pieces set up for just a minute and uh, let's work on the trunk here. All right, I've still got some glue on this door. It's a little bit wet. I'm gonna let that set up because on this door, I put some super glue, just the medium, the gap filling medium super glue on there. And then I hit it with some kicker, some Instaset uh, accelerator, uh, super glue kicker. You'll hear a lot of guys call it that, which is really good at instantly setting the glue. But the bad thing about that is right before it sets the glue, it liquefies everything and then sets it instantly. And so what it did was it liquefied it and then it came out, it basically filled in all my door gaps and then set instantly. So super glue is really hard and it doesn't want to scribe. So I tried scribing it out of there, but since the glue is so hard and textured and it just is jagged, um, it's scribed into the plastic a little bit more. Um, so I've got a little bit of an uneven line there on the bottom. I'm not very happy with that. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about it yet. We'll see. I've, I've toyed with the idea of using some super glue uncure, uh, putting it on there, pulling these doors off, smoothing them down, and then trying again. Um, we'll see. This door is kind of crooked. A little bit of a gap on the bottom. Anyway, I'm not super happy with how these doors went in. Um, but the rest of the body panels look like they're fitting pretty good. I still need to scribe uh, the bottom of the trunk there where the two plastics met up so there's not really a gap, just a slight seam. So I'm going to scribe that 
And then once this glue is set up, I'm going to finish scribing out this door to make it look a little more even and gap that a little bit more. Anyway, so uh, we'll see what I'm going to do with that. As soon as that door sets up and I finish scribing the rest of these out, I think we're ready for some primer on this thing. All right, I'm going to try a little something. So I had some scratches from when I was scribing that glue and it kept kicking me out and scratching my body, which we don't want. So I was filling that in and I thought, well, maybe I'll just fill in this whole panel line uh, with some Mr. Surface 500. Um, obviously it looks a little rough right now because I'm gonna let that set and then I'm gonna sand it smooth and it's gonna give me a little, it's gonna give me a groove. It'll sink into that groove. Um, so I'll still be able to see where my panel line is and then I'll try to get a straight edge and then scribe straight through there and hopefully it'll fill in a little of those gaps and uh, get it looking a little bit straighter for me. So we'll give that a shot and see how that works out. All right, so I got my primer sanded down and it actually filled in a couple of little spots there. And then I tried scribing it out again I think it looks a little better, but it's still kind of bobbled around. So I might play with that a little bit more. Maybe I'll fill it in with some, maybe some actual putty or something. Cause you can see I'm still fighting. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I'm still fighting with the super glue behind there. So I might fill it in with some actual putty, maybe run a toothpick over it just to smooth it in and then scribe it once the putty dries. Anyway, I'm going to try a couple of things and I'll let you know what I come up with on that. And then I've just got one little scratch there that I'm filling in. I'm letting that dry as I was scribing that off. Of course, I skipped off. And I think I broke the windshield mount down there at the point at least four times, maybe five or six. And uh, just kind of glued it back on every time. Added some a little bit more super glue on the underside just to give it a little bit more strength. So it feels a little bit stronger. Luckily, I didn't break this side off yet, but, you know, we still got some time to go. So we'll see what happens with that. But anyway, so... One of the reasons why I need to be so precise with this build, like rounding off the corners on the hood and things like that, is because the real car, the one-to-one, -one, has rounded corners on the hood. And this car is going to actually be part of a story, so it needs to look as close to the one-to-one -one car as possible. So I think that'll do it for this video. Make sure you stay tuned for the next one. We're going to start getting this thing into primer, sanded down, smoothed down, uh, getting some of the other parts finished up painted and installed on some of the interior uh, figure out how I'm gonna paint this get it together so I can get it straight and then paint it as well so uh, so yeah make sure you stay tuned for all that so thanks for watching guys we'll see you on the next one